Now, um, on the test, all right, there's going to be the first page where you have to demonstrate that you can solve by taking the square root, solve by factoring, completing the square, and using the quadratic formula. You have to demonstrate that. Then the second half, you can decide however you want to solve it. All right, on the last page, it was just the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so I don't think it's going to be that hard. All right, I'm expecting you to know the formulas. That might be a little challenging. All right, that's why you write them down. All right, so let's start with number two. All right, we're isolating the square term. So to isolate the square term, I'd add three. So x plus one squared equals 24. Is everybody good with that? And then we take the square root, right? Now, I would like everyone to tell me, we're not even looking at the square root of 24. We just look at that and say, that breaks down to what? Six and four. No, two radical six, please, two radical six. For those of you guys who are still, 24 is four times six. The square root of four is what? Two, we've done this for a long time now. You should be getting the hang of it, all right? So X plus one equals plus or minus two radical six. And then what do I do with the one? Subtract it, thank you. X equals negative one plus or minus two radical six. Okay, the directions for number four are solve by factoring. So if it says solve by factoring, you just have to put your two sets of parentheses down. How do we want to break down 4x squared? We can say 2x and 2x. Now what? 9 and 1, right? 3 and 3 don't work, right? So how did he know that? Because he put a 9 down on his paper and then a 1. He did the smiley face. How much is that? How much is this? 18, right? So altogether that makes what? If they're both, there you have it. All right, now once you solve that, you set the factors equal to zero. And then we just solve that. So how do I get rid of plus one? Minus one, then how do I get rid of times two? divide by two, or x equals what? Negative nine over two. Come on, guys. Okay, now the next one is solved by completing the square. How do I know I'm going to solve by completing the square? Because I look at the middle term, the middle term is even. I want the middle term to be even and the leading coefficient to be a one. Because it's even and a one, it's really easy to solve by completing the square. All right, so the rules for completing the square, remember you move the negative 11 over. So we have x squared plus two x, leave a space equals 11. Now who remembers what the formula was for completing the square? It's like what? Half of, half of B, and then what? And then squared. That's the formula for completing the square. Now, if you recall, this is A, this is B, and this is C. So we're taking half of what number? Two, and then we're squaring it. What's two divided by two? One squared, one. So we're adding one. We're adding one. Now it factors. It always factors to whatever the half was. What's half of two? Yeah. One. X plus one squared. Everybody's good with that?
Anybody have any issues? Now that we have that isolated, we go ahead and take the square root. X plus one. All right, now how does 12 break down? Two radical three. For those of you guys who are wondering, 12 is four times three. Square root of four is what? Two. That's why it comes out as a two radical three. Last step is to just move the one over. So X equals Thank you. Negative one plus or minus two radical three. All right. Now the next one that's kind of annoying is the quadratic formula. Those of you guys who forgot the quadratic formula, I'll write it up here just so you can see it. Negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Everybody good with that? So in this case, somebody tell me what A is. Yeah. One, B is what? Yeah. And C is beautiful. Come on now, everybody can do this. Everybody can plug numbers in. So the opposite of B, what's the opposite of B? Negative. Yes, negative seven, plus or minus. What's seven squared? Mm -hmm. 49 minus 4 times 1 times 5, all over 2. Anybody have any questions with that? Come on now, everybody can do that. Now, what's underneath the radical is called the discriminant. So I need help. What is that right there? What is that answer? Negative 29. What? Positive 29. X equals negative seven plus or minus the square root of 29 all over what? All over two. Is everybody okay with that? All right, now listen to what I'm telling you. All right, so please look down. All right, at the next page, flip the page. Now I kind of went through and I kind of showed the kids, how do I know what's what? All right. Number 10 is definitely a factoring problem. How do I know it's factoring? Because one times negative 11 is negative 11. Are there factors of negative 11 that make negative 10? And the answer is yes. All right. So because there are factors of negative 11 that make 10, then we can factor this. So you're going to solve by factoring. Now here is on number 12. Is the middle term even? No. Is it, can it factor? Definitely can't factor. So then I have to use the what? Quadratic formula. So you're going to use the quadratic formula for number 12. All right. Number 14, it looks like that factors. No. But it doesn't because this is a plus sign. All right. So we're going to use the quadratic formula on that also. Everybody good? All right. Number 16. It's already a perfect square. So this one we're going to do by taking the square root. You have to isolate. All right. Like number 22. Now, 18. Look at 18. The middle term is even. The leading coefficient is a 1. We cannot factor it. Therefore, it's complete the square. 
complete the square. All right, let's look down at 20. This one, we just straight take the square root. 22, we're going to take the square root. All right, isolate. Now, number 23, everybody take a quick look at 23. To solve this, we do what? Cross multiply. All right, we cross multiply. All right, so that's what we start out with when we cross multiply. All right, 24, quadratic formula. Again, how do I know that? Because the middle term is odd and it doesn't factor. All right, so that's why I want you to do the quadratic formula. Wait, for number 23, after cross multiplying, what does it become? 2x squared plus x. Which is just square root? 2x squared plus x equals 15. Mm -hmm. Then you move the 15 over and solve it by All right. factoring. All right, now let's practice. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to practice finding the distance between two points. All right, so here we go for number 26. Distance formula, again, write it so you'll remember it. Distance equals square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Up here, this is x1 comma y1. This is x2 comma y2. Everybody okay with that? Now, let's see if we can do this. Hold on one second. All right. So distance equals square root 6 minus negative 4. So that's 6 plus 4 squared. Y2 is negative 6 plus one squared. What's six plus four? What's 10 squared? A hundred. What's negative six plus one? Negative five squared. Positive 25, very good. So the distance is square root of 125, but now I have to break that down. And of course, everybody should know there's a common 25 in there. 25 times 5. What's the square root of 25? Wow. So there we have it. 5 radical 5. So we're literally just like filling in? Yeah, you're just plugging in. All right, just plugging in. All right, let's scroll down now for Pythagorean theorem. All right, let's look at 22 or 32. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Do we know what A is? No. So A squared plus 10 squared equals 26 squared. A squared plus 100 plus, I believe that's 676. A squared equals 576. So taking the square root, A is 24. All right, we'll do 34 because it's got a couple of radicals in there. All right. Yeah, all right, let's do 34. A, again, we should write A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Plus four radical three squared plus B squared equals six radical three squared.
All right, what's four radical three squared? 16. Yes, very nice, 16 times three. 16 times three is plus B squared. What's six squared? Square root of three squared. Good. So now 48 plus B squared equals 108. Subtract 48, so B squared is equal to 60. Does everybody agree? And now we take the square root. Square root of 60, remember, is 4 times 15. So 2 radical 15. Anybody have any questions with that? Anybody? All right, so now I'm going to put it on pause. All right, and what I would like for you to do is, all right. Now, again, here's where I want you to take a look at what you did and see if there's one in particular you'd like me to take a look at real quick. Anybody? I just had a quick question um, for 16. All right, 16. Everybody's looking at 16. Just... Now, in this problem, you're going to add 8 first. You isolate the square, 3x minus 1. Squared equals 15. Now, to undo the square, we take the square root. 3x minus 1 equals plus or minus square root of 15. Now, I add 1. 3x equals 1 plus or minus square root of 15, and then divide by 3. 1 plus or minus square root of 15 all over 3. Anybody else? Tell me. 15. Let's take a quick look at 15. Now, I showed kids there's two ways to do this, right? You can isolate the square term by adding 36 and then divided by 25. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. You see that? And then I can just do what from here? Take the square root, right? And so x equals plus or minus 6 fifths. Or you can factor it. That would be the easy way also. 5x plus 6, 5x minus 6. And then you just set those factors equal to 0. And then what do you know? X equals negative 6 fifths. X equals 6 fifths, which is the same as what that is over there. Okay. That makes sense. Those are just two techniques just to show you. I don't care how you solve it. All right? I don't care. Some ways are just easier than others. All right, we got time, guys. Anybody else want me to take a look at a problem? Okay. On 13, we have to isolate the square term. So I have to divide by 8 first. You agree with that? Now you take the square root. Now when you take the square root, you need plus or minus. But the square root of 8, remember, square root of 8 can be broken down to 4 times 2. All right, so x minus 3 equals plus or minus 2 radical 2, and then add the 3. Is everybody good with that? Anybody? Does that make sense? All right, somebody else would like me to do another problem. Anybody would like me to do another problem? So it seems like things are going pretty well. All right, the more you do now, the less you have. 
Anybody have any questions? All right, please work, please work. Tomorrow, I'll spend the rest of the day going over anything that you're unsure of.